you know, when you, when you take out an insurance policy, one of the things they will point out to you is the benefits of the policy. When you accept Jesus Christ, it's like taking out an eternal life policy. And this policy has benefits. And because of this resurrection, the miracle of the resurrection that makes all other miracles possible. Uh, my subject for you today is the benefits of the resurrection. So everybody's saying he's alive, he's alive. He's alive. What does that mean to me? What does it mean to you? Well, yeah, he's alive. He's doing his own thing. What does it mean to you? In my conclusion, I will show you, uh, actually wrap up what I'm saying. There about four or five benefits. But follow me as I take you to the scene. Now, how many of you want to know what your future looks like? How many of you want to know what your tomorrow, your next month, your next year, your eternity looks like? Well, in order to go into the future, we have to go back to the resurrection. And so my theme is back to the future. To go forward, to see forward, you've got to go backward here. And so we are going back to the resurrection scene, and it will tell us a lot about what our future holds. Topic, benefits of the resurrection. Theme, back to the future. To know what your future looks like, you have to go back to the past. And my wife sends greetings to you. She looks so lovely. Stand up, sweetheart. We don't make much of you, but I think we should. First lady. Well, you know, I never call her first lady. I call her the only lady in my life. Yes, yes. Hallelujah. And great worship, great music. Oh, my gosh. Oh, thank you. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. Okay, John chapter 20. And my main text is from verse 14. And when she, Mary, had turned herself back, she saw Jesus standing, knew not it was Jesus. Strange. Jesus said unto her, woman, why are you crying? And I'm going to ask you that question. Why are you weeping? What is making you sad? Why, why is your heart so heavy? Second question you have to, who are you looking for? That's a question I have for you too. What are you looking for? Who's the one who can solve your problems? How is this story relevant to my life? Jesus said unto a woman, why are you weeping? Why, who, you, who do you seek? Interesting now. She, supposing him to be the gardener, or the caretaker of the garden there said unto him, Sir, if you have taken him away, tell me where you put him, and I will take him away. Up in verse 39 of the preceding chapter, Nicodemus brought a hundred pounds of spices and ointments and put it in his body. Jesus was 100 pounds heavier now. And she was willing to take him. Are you willing to take a Jesus that is not as light as you thought? Because sometimes it can be heavy. These are just thoughts I'm passing to you as we go along to my, 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 my benefits. So if you've taken away, please tell me where, you've laid, where you have laid him. I will take him away. She turned herself and said, when he called her name. There must be something authentic about the way he called the name. I don't know if it was a soothing, loving voice. Mary. I don't know. But when she heard the voice, she turned around and said, Rabboni! 
which is to say, Master. If you notice in the gospel, nobody ever called Jesus by his name. Check it. Nobody ever called Jesus, Jesus. It was always master or Lord or teacher. Once it is mentioned where the Greeks came to Philip and said, Sir, we want to see Jesus. But they never called him by his name. You see, let me not get ahead of myself. That's one of the benefits of the resurrection. <laughs> we get to call his name. Jesus said unto her, now here, is, here we're going to get into abstract theology. Touch me not. Shh. Mary, don't touch me. Why? I've always touched you. I, I, I washed your feet with my tears. No, 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 not now. Touch me not. There's a reason. For I am not yet ascended to my father. But go tell my brethren and say unto them, I ascend to my father and to your father. There's another benefit. And to my God and to your God. The same day, verse 19. The same day in the evening. This was morning, the evening. When the doors were shut. Where the disciples were assembled for fear of the Jews. Some people are afraid of people. When you have Jesus, a resurrected Christ, you won't fear anybody. Amen. So they were, they were huddled together for fear of the Jews. Because if the Jews killed him, they could kill them too. But when Jesus is alive in you, nobody can really kill you. Amen. You're alive to be alive forevermore. Celebrate your eternity. Celebrate your eternal life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And with the doors shut, this is another benefit. He stood in the midst of them. And the fourth, fifth benefit, peace be unto you. And when he had said that, he showed them his hands and his side. And the disciples were glad when they saw the Lord. More benefits. And so he had invited Thomas to come and touch him. He told Mary, don't touch him. Now, the evening, what happened between the early morning and the late evening? That is where we will want to find out some of the blessings. The benefits of the resurrection back to the future. Let me give you some little thoughts as I come down to the benefits. The first day of the week, verse 1. Mary Magdalene, whom he had cast out seven devils from, when it was yet dark, she saw the stone rolled away and she got scared. The first point I'd like to drop on you today is when it was yet dark, there are some times you can't decide when it's dark, you have to wait for the light. Because things in the dark don't make sense. It was dark. She assumed, based on what she heard, that the Jews complained to Pilate, let's put a big stone and put the royal seal so that no, no, none of his followers will steal his body and claim that he's alive. So the seal of the tomb... Uh, when she saw the stone was rolled away, she figured somebody stole the body. But the, the truth is, uh, and I, I like this. This is just before I get into where I'm going. When she looked again, she saw two angels. One at the head and one at the foot. And th this is cute. The napkins were folded up and put by the head. And the linen was folded up. And put by the feet where the body was. So if somebody was going to steal his body. Here is evidence that the thieves wouldn't take time to fold up his clothes and do a neat job. When, look, if a thief ever broke into your house, they'll leave it messed up. So here is evidence that it wasn't stolen. And the point I want to make is when you wake up in the morning, make up your bed. 
because Jesus did that. <laughs> you know, I do that every morning. Every morning I make up the bed. She gets up before me and uh, I cannot bear to see a bed that's not properly made up. It, it bothers me. So I have a biblical example. When you rise up, make up your bed. Okay. The fun part is gone. So she, verse 2, then she runs to Simon Peter and to the other disciple whom Jesus loved. That's John. And said to him, they've taken away the Lord. And we don't know where they have laid him. She's still thinking he's dead. See, when it's dark, you don't understand what's going on. And so, she ran with the message. I am telling you that we have a message now that we have to run with it. Yes. This message of the resurrection is not something we sit down and praise the Lord with. We have to run with it and tell the world because the world doesn't know what you know. Because they haven't lived what you have lived. They haven't experienced what you have experienced. You have experienced a living Christ in your being whom you can talk to the Father through his name. Hallelujah. We have a message to run with. And I wonder what message are we running with? You know, if, if somebody said, if the Pentecostals had the methodology of the Jehovah Witnesses, and if the Jehovah Witnesses had the message of the Pentecostals, we would have already won this world. So what message are we running with if we are running with gossip? Is it so sad and, and hurtful to see people running and telling stories they know nothing about and the story that they should be telling is not told? Let's tell the story. Let's run with the message because we have a message. Paul said, if Christ is not risen, then our faith is in vain. But we know he's alive. Run with the message. So the other disciples, they went in and they stooped down and they saw an empty tomb. And the Bible says that they went back to the verse 10. Then the disciples went away again to their own home. In verse 9, for as yet they knew not the scripture that he must rise again from the dead. This is the disciples whom he continuously spoke to about his death and his resurrection. They didn't know the scriptures. And that's part of our problem. That's the reason why we walk in darkness. That's the reason why we sorrow without understanding. Because we don't know what the word says. If we know what the word says, we will live according to those words. And we will have hope. Thy word will give hope. Keep that word in you. But you see, some women... Have some better qualities than men. <laughs> men are quitters. Some women linger. I don't mean that in a bad way, but if my wife starts a conversation, <laughs> I'm sure you men understand. This this is a um, lady said to her. To her husband, I'm not going to talk to you. He said, was that by revelation? <laughs> she said, is that all you're going to say? He said, no ma'am. I respect your decision. <laughs> if you're not going to talk to me, praise the Lord. <laughs> so, men see the story, they see the situation, they form a conclusion, and they go away. Not so with women. And you ladies know when you go to shop, you will look at a dress five times. Front, back, hem, sleeve. You, you will scrutinize that 
If a man goes to buy a shirt or shoes, bim, bam, cash out. <laughs> but ladies love to linger. And so we find that it's a nice quality. So she lingered. Mary stood outside the sepulcher, poor thing, weeping. And as she wept, she stooped down. I am asking you the question, what is it that's making you weep? What is it so heavy that's dropping you down to the ground? Why have you lost hope? Why your tomorrow looks so bleak and dreary? What is, has driven you to this point? And to her, it's because she couldn't find Jesus when she wanted to see him. And may I encourage you, there will be dark days in your walk with God. There will be times when you will pray and pray and pray and pray. And it seems that God is not hearing you and that heaven is silent. Don't be discouraged. Stay right there. Stoop down. Humble yourself and you will hear something beautiful. And when she saw two angels sitting, one at the head and the other at the feet, where the body of Jesus had, they said unto him, Woman, why are you crying? Why are you weeping? Can you give me one good reason why you are living a sorrowful life? Why is your life always full of sadness? And there is no, no day that you can really jump and dance and rejoice. Why is your life continuously sad? Why? She said, I know not where they have laid my Lord. She loved him. She made the biggest sacrifice in scripture that Jesus said it should be a memorial wherever this gospel is preached. Broke a spikenard, box of alabaster, and uh, that was, Judas found that very stupid. This could have been sold for 300 pennies. That's a year and a half salary. And given to the poor, not that he cared for the poor, but he carried the bag. He was a thief, the Bible says. He was more concerned about money than worshiping the Lord. And she and Jesus said, leave her alone. She has done this for my burial. And so she, because of that great love she had for Jesus, she stayed back. I'm going to say something here that might rub you the wrong way. When you love Jesus, after the service is finished, you don't just get up and run away. You stay back a little. Linger a little. Mix, you might be talking to an angel and not know it. Somebody might have a word for you, a hug, a handshake, a greeting that you will miss if you just run out the property. Please, I know some people have to work and they have left their food on the stove cooking, but, but two minutes will not take away from you that moment of fellowship. There's a blessing in staying back. And she, she stayed back and she found not the angels moved. And when she said, I know not where they had laid him, verse 14, when she had thus said, she turned herself back. Sometimes you just got to turn around. Sometimes you just got to see what's happening behind you so that you could better understand what's happening in front of you. And when she turned back, she saw Jesus standing and knew not it was him. Here is a problem. She, an unrecognized Jesus. In your situation, in your sorrow, in your bewilderment, in your confusion, in what you're going through, in your hardship, in your continuous pain, in your misery, in your worry, in your frustration, Jesus is standing right there with you, but you can't recognize him. Why? Because you've been clouded by everything. And your sight is lost. 
You lost a view of him. You don't even recognize that where you are right now in your walk, that Jesus is right there with you. The unrecognized Christ, she knew not it was Jesus. And so sometimes it's hard to recognize what you're experiencing is from the Lord and that he's present with you and that he's never going to leave you. So let's go to the benefits. Jesus said unto her, woman, why are you weeping? First benefit, you got to follow me now. She's supposing him to be the gardener. Said unto him. Now there are two, two, two sides to this coin about the gardener. It was not the olive garden way in Gethsemane. This was a different garden near the tomb. What happened in the first garden? You lost. We lost the joy. We lost the beauty of a garden. We lost the fragrance of flowers, and birds, and bees, and butterflies. And we faced the desert. Dry and dark and lonely. And in her supposition, she, she could be right. But she was actually looking at the gardener of the universe. All things are kept by his power. He's keeping this world alive and fresh. Every day we get oxygen to breathe. And so that the first benefit of the resurrection is to restore your paradise. It's to restore your garden. It's to make things bright around you again. It's to bring back some flowers in your life. It's to bring back some joy in your life. It's to make you happy again. Women love flowers. And so your garden will blossom again. Can I hear somebody? First benefit. Your garden is restored. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And the flip side to that is when he made the garden in Eden, he told Adam, dress it and keep it. Now, when God makes you happy again and brings things back in your life and put it in order, you have to keep your garden. Because God is not going to come and till it every day for you. You have a responsibility. He set you up. He restored you. You're happy again. Maintain your joy. Maintain your fellowship with the Father. First benefit, your garden is restored. The second benefit, when he said, Mary, he knows your name. He knows you personally. You think he doesn't know you. You feel like you're a stranger. Let me tell you. The benefit of the resurrection, being born again, your name was written down in the Lamb's book of life. He reads that book every day. He sees your name in the book of life and he knows you by name. Go ahead, call your name. Say your name to yourself. Go ahead, say, say your name. He knows that name. And maybe tonight in a dream you will hear him calling your name. Oh, the benefit of him knowing your name is that he knows you personally. He doesn't call you by somebody else's name. Okay, let me go. Jesus said, Mary, touch me not. Now here I'm going into some abstracts. And you got to follow me. Because this might not be, this might be new to you. You got, just got to follow me here. Touch me not. Why? Okay. Understand that this body of Jesus that was standing there, that was now glorified because of the resurrection power, this body was never seen in heaven before. Never. In heaven, he was the logos in the bosom of the Father. Beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. No angel in heaven saw this frame. 
It had to be approved in heaven. Don't, don't touch me. Let me go to my father. And so he went up. I could just imagine all heaven. Who is that? We know it's not an angel. He doesn't have wings. He's not a cherubim. He's not a seraphim. Who is that? They've never seen his body before. And don't you think everybody, all the angels in heaven come down to earth when they want? No, no, no. They're fixed in their stations. And God stood and said, This is my beloved son with whom I am very well pleased and announced to all heaven that his son is come up bringing many sons into glory. When you were, when he died, you were in him, you died in him. When he was risen from the dead, you rose with him. When he went to heaven, he took you with him. And the benefit is you became there a son of glory. There you receive the adoption of sons, the spirit of adoption that you can cry, Abba, Father, there it happened. And watch, it could happen no other place or time. The high priest in the temple in heaven, Gave him the bowl, the basin of blood. And he walked to the mercy seat. Hebrews said, and there, once and for all, he offered his own blood for our sanctification. These things are happening up there. That's why he said, don't touch me. So he offered his blood. Redemption was confirmed and sealed. The father was pleased. And the father said to him, son, come and sit on my right hand. And gave him the right hand of power. So that when Jesus would come back to earth, he would now be able to say, all power is given to me in heaven and in earth and beneath the earth that's the Jesus we serve an all powerful not the Galilean dusty footed one not the one who was hungry and tired oh it's not a new Jesus it's a different body a transformed glorified body who has been exalted and God has given him a name that is above every other name and whether they be thrones or principalities and powers, every knee shall bow and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. There he became the author of our salvation. There he became the first fruit of the resurrection of them that slept. So, when heaven had confirmed, he also told her, here's another benefit. He said, don't touch me, Mary. Next statement is, because I'm going to my father and to your father. Oh, when that truth dawned on me, that Jesus was willing to share the relationship of a father and son that he had with me and with you, that's a glorious benefit. Never before in the Old Testament, God was never called father. But he gave us this privilege that we can access presence and call God father. Abba. Abba. A slave can never use that word. It's a personal relationship expression when you call him Abba. And he had given us the spirit of adoption whereby we can cry, Abba, Father. 
He said, I'm going to make my father your father. That's a benefit. Do you know that Jesus, his father, is our father? He has intimated that in, in the model prayer. When you pray, say, our father. He gave them a hint. No, it's a reality. Make use of the privilege as you call God father. Jesus had given some indications before. He said, which one of you, being a father, if your son asks for a bread, will you give him a stone? If he asks for an egg, will you give him a scorpion? Because scorpions were brown and they had the tendency to roll up and fold themselves like an egg. And you could miss, you could get stung. If you ask for a fish, will he give you a serpent? They had a lot of electric eels in the lake. And the point is, what Jesus is making, he will never deceive you. He will give you what you ask for. And then he looked at his audience and said, if you, being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more will your heavenly father give good things of the Holy Spirit to them that ask of him? So go ahead and ask. He told him, ask that your joy might be full. He said, up until now you haven't asked for anything. Come on, ask. Ask and you shall receive. The Greek word I tell you is saying, I am asking you to ask. You have not because you ask not. Come on, let's do some asking today. Ask and you shall receive. Why? You have a father who cares. Jesus said, look at them flowers. So beautiful. Solomon in all his glory. Wasn't arrayed like them. He said, look at, look, look at them spirals. They're healthy, yet they do not work or labor. The father takes care of them. And he looked at them. Aren't you worth more? Worth more than the sparrows because you were created in his image and in his likeness. You like him. And when man fell, man fell. That image was lost. He restored the image in Jesus Christ. So that when you have Jesus Christ, you have the image of God. Amen. You will begin to look like your father again. Amen. Glory to God. I'm going to my father and to your father, to my God and to your God. He's not just only father. He's God. He's creator. He's all powerful. He's omniscient, omnipresent, omnipotent. Unto him that is able to do exceeding. We, listen. Stop thinking that anything is too hard for God. Amen. Get out of the small thinking zone. That our father is not, he not able to do that. You know, uh, uh, we have good doctors. No, 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 no. Leave the doctors alone. Your father is able. He is able. He's able to do what doctors can do. He's able to do what education can do. He's able to do what money can do. He's able. Somebody say it with me. He's able. He's able. He's able. Hallelujah. What a benefit to have a God that's able. I remember when I was in India, I, I went to this temple and Elijah spoke about this it's, it's, it's all over the east I heard these loud firecrackers pow pow and the, 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 the pastor there carried me inside there was long God sleeping big you know he's, he's, how long is this but he's sleeping and and the people who went to pray to that statue, they took a firecracker and they threw it in his air. Wake up! That was the idea. Wake up! Elijah told them, go, your God must be sleeping somewhere. I want to let you know my God is awake and alive. He will never sleep nor slumber. Hallelujah! He's ready to hear your cry. 
He's ready to, to receive your prayer. Go ahead and ask one. Come on, go ahead and ask for something today. Glory to God. Let me, let me cut, out, cut out a few things here. Time is gone. Uh, I'll give you one more, and then I'll wrap up. Then the same day at evening, same day, a lot can happen in a day. The same day at evening being the first day of the week, that was Sunday. When the doors were shut, the disciples were assembled for fear of the Jews. Jesus came and stood in the midst and said unto them, peace be unto you. That's one of the beautiful benefits of the resurrection. Nothing can shut Jesus out of your life. The devil has not built a door strong enough to keep him away from you. Rest assured and have the peace of God. And when you go home, when you lock your bedroom door and you go to sleep, Jesus is with you. Yeah. Hallelujah. So how do we apply this to ourselves? How is the resurrection benefiting me personally? We went back. Let's look at the future. Let's go back to the future in a couple of minutes and I'll be finished here. Romans 6. 1, 2, 3. Know ye not that so many of us were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death. Don't you know that when he died, we died with him? Therefore, we were buried with him by baptism unto death. That, like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also yes. should walk in newness of life. Here's the final wrap-up of the benefits of the resurrection. God wants you to walk in newness. He doesn't want you to walk in the old ways. May I go and be so brave to say that God wants the best for you. God wants you to have a new house. God wants you to have a new car. God wants you to have a new job. God wants you to have a new relationship. God wants you to have new friends. Hey, walk in newness. Behold, I make all things new. If any man be in Christ. Come on, you're not helping me. All things are passed away. That's the benefit. One of the many benefits of the resurrection is that he is going to make all things new. You're going to walk in newness. Let me prophesy to you. You are going to walk in newness. Because God said so. I can take it from the authority of his word. Your old beaten pathway, he's going to move you into a new path. From today, you will see new things happening in your life. From today, you will get new visions, new dreams. A new joy is going to come and envelop you. A new kind of peace that will pass. All understanding will uh, consume your life. You will be covered with newness. If Christ is not risen, then our faith is in vain. Back to the future. We went back to see our tomorrow. And your tomorrow looks very good. Mike is going to come and wrap up for me. And then the ministers will come after. Thank you, Mike. Did you understand some of the benefits of the resurrection? Did you understand some of the benefits you have because he's risen from the dead? Don't take it for granted.